It is the biggest game for the Washington Huskies in quite some time as they welcome in the Stanford Cardinal this Friday night. We bring in Jack Fullman from Pacific Takes to help us break this one down. So, Jack, uh, before we get to uh, Friday night's game, obviously the Huskies almost didn't make it to Friday night undefeated because of a very t difficult game on the road in the Pac-12. I had heard a stat that day that Rich Rod was uh, at working on four consecutive seasons of defeating a top 10 team uh, at home in consecutive seasons. He almost made it five. Yeah, it was uh, certainly not a game I think many people saw going to overtime. And Arizona gave them everything they could handle on both sides of the ball. Uh, defensively, they had some points in the game where Washington just couldn't do anything against Arizona's defense. And their uh, their backup quarterback, Brandon Dawkins, he really gave them a lot of trouble with his legs. Uh, he made a few really huge plays that I think a couple for long touchdown runs that basically kept Arizona uh, in that game. And that's a good point. Uh, we'll start there, Jack, because Brandon Dawkins doesn't have much experience. He's battled for the starting job. We're used to the name of new Solomon. He's been injured. He's been nicked up uh, based on my Arizona sources, though, even despite having some slight injuries, he's basically lost the job. And Brandon Dawkins, because of that dynamic playmaking ability, has been the guy to take his place. Um, that Arizona's uh, offense, regardless, under uh, against inferior foes, have have not uh, fared well to date before the Washington game. Uh, the the one decent opponent they played was BYU, and they were held to like sixteen or eighteen points in that game, uh, shut out in the first half. So uh, I didn't see this one coming, especially since NFL scouts are projecting like seven Washington Huskies on defense to make it to the NFL. So maybe some slight concerns from that game. Definitely, definitely. I think particularly, especially early on, you watch the game at defensive end. Washington's defense, if there's a weak point, it's defensive end. They have a couple seniors in the spots, but they're not guys uh, who are nearly as highly regarded as the other NFL players that you're talking about. And I think Arizona knew that, and they attacked big time and caught them over pursuing. Uh, then Dawkins had the speed to where – if you made one mistake in the backfield when you thought you had him and he got a seam, he was gone. And I think some of those, you know, the better Husky defenders also as well might have been a little bit too uh, jacked up about their first uh, their first big game of the season. We're kind of going going a little bit, you know, a little bit crazy on their angles and not wrapping up and going for big hits. And it really cost them against a, a quarterback who has the speed to burn you if you make that mistake. 512 yards of total offense for Arizona or for Washington, I'm sorry, still speaks well of the offensive display. LeVon Coleman had a big day. Uh, it seemed to be the missed opportunities uh, in the red zone in plus territory whether it's a missed field goal or not converting on third and fourth down that uh, cost the Huskies from kind of pulling away uh, something that they're going to have to clean up for the Stanford game yeah they missed a couple makeable field goals they had a bad turnover a bad interception down in the red zone they yeah they they were they weren't that clean once they got over the 50. They put up a lot of yards. Uh, they started with a lot of bad field position and uh, made the most out of it. But when they got across that 50, they, they're they really going to have to step up their efficiency and they're going to have to find ways to get in the end zone or to make the kicks that they're going to need because they're going to have to put up more points uh, against better, t better defenses as the year goes on. Now for Washington fans, they're uh... – familiar with the name LeVon Coleman, but for the rest of us, uh, yeah, if you watched any Washington football when Coleman was a freshman a couple of years ago, he ran for 565 yards, was one of the main producers on offense rushing the football. Then, of course, Miles Gaskin breaks onto the scene as a underregarded recruit and then gains 1,300 yards, and he's kind of the main guy and the guy that we all focused on from a rushing standpoint heading into the heading into this season, but uh, they seem to be uh, sharing the load in, in terms of uh, at least yardage. Gaskin still getting most of the attempts, but LeVon Coleman adding something to the mix as well. Yeah, that was a huge surprise. Uh, LeVon Coleman, I think he had 180-something yards on only 11 carries. He made the most of what he got, and he he's a guy I think most Washington fans, people follow the program, had kind of forgotten about. He had fully been beaten out by Gaskin and I think expected to be maybe a short yardage back because he's a little bit bigger around 220, 225, but he exploded against Arizona. And not only did he explode, he didn't look like the player people thought he was. He, once he got a seam, he was, uh, you know, busting big long runs and he had this, the power to also run over people as a complete back. And I don't think people were expecting that. And if he can maintain that, he's going to be a huge addition to that offense. 
Yeah, and as I mentioned, for a guy that had a pretty decent uh, freshman year with over 500 yards, he only touched the ball out of the backfield 27 times last year, 33 times the year before, so 60 carries in two years. So, yeah, he had uh, been forgotten and, and eclipsed by Gaskin, but a big night in Tucson. Uh, Jake Browning uh, entered this game, at least, as you well know, Jack, as the number one rated efficiency passer in America, albeit against the likes of the three teams that they played, Idaho... Portland State, Rutgers. Uh, what did you see out of the Browning against not a great defense by any stretch, but a better opponent? He came out really well, really efficient. I think he completed on close to his first 10 passes, and they weren't all easy passes. He would kind of look like his usual self. He also was really good at mixing around the pocket. He's not a, a speed guy, but he's one of the better guys in the Pac-12, at least, of if you uh, – pressure him he's going to get away from you and run for six yards or make a play down down the field make the spark play he had a rough patch i'd say i think it was in the third quarter maybe early fourth where he was seeing a lot of pressure and he had to try to force some balls he forced one bad pass which got intercepted by the goal line uh but he responded and on the that final touchdown pass he threw that was a, a dart and the guy wasn't the guy wasn't open and he made the play and he had a couple other uh, passes late in the game where uh, he didn't have guys open, but he just put the pass where only the receiver could catch it and allowed him to make a play. So he he looked like what we thought he was. He's had a little bit more struggles against you know a Pac-12 defense on the road, but he still looked apart. Yeah, Jack. Now if Washington's to ascend to the top of the ladder in the Pac-12, they get the team that's owned the Pac-12 the last couple years and owned it with Oregon for the past five or six, and that's of course. Stanford. They've got them in Seattle. The Cardinal coming off an effort at the Rose Bowl where they got the win against a quality opponent, but they didn't score a touchdown until 16 seconds left in the game. So uh, difficult moving the football against the Bruins. The Bruins much tougher uh, defensively against the run than they were last year. Uh, but they did make the drive when they had to, and Ryan Burns got the job done. So now we've got a, a clash of heavyweights in the Pac-12 this Friday. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big, big one, uh, especially for Washington. They haven't had a game of this size in, you know, more than 15 years, I think. And they, uh, they're they going to get a real op opponent in Stanford who's done some nice things against the L.A. schools and Kansas State. Uh, and I, I, I like their chances, but, you know, that's a really good Stanford team. And Washington kind of looked at me, I think, made people a little more uneasy than – people expected with their game against Arizona. So I'm very interested to see how both those teams come out. So Jack, from a Washington perspective, what are the, the signs of hope to pull off the upset and gain the upper advantage in the North division? And what are the causes of concern against Stanford? I think the biggest, uh, reason for hope is Washington has struggled with those uh, those zone read hurry up type type teams in recent history but they've really really done well against the teams that want to line up and kind of kind of power outpower you the way Stanford does uh, case in point other than last year when they didn't have Browning they've played Stanford exceptionally well uh, in the past four or five years or so they don't that that's the kind of team that their defense you know that powerful husky defense seems to do well in keeping the opponents in front of them and kind of knowing what they're doing that's fine with them and they get it at home i think they should have woken up last week uh with that arizona that arizona test you know i don't think they're going to come in thinking uh uh they're definitely not going to overlook stanford but i think they're going to you know have a little bit more to prove uh now uh what to worry about i'm pretty i'm a little bit worried about Washington's offense, especially on the offensive line. I think people kind of forgot last year that there was an offense that at times just wasn't doing anything at all. They just really couldn't move the ball. They uh, couldn't make big plays, and they hung their defense out to dry a lot, and they can't do that against Stanford. And they showed that against the Arizona defense that, you know, clearly played well but an Arizona defense that I think people would probably put near the bottom of the Pac-12. And if they struggled that hard at times against Arizona's defense, you have to wonder what they're going to do against a Stanford defense that I think has mainly maybe only given up three touchdowns so far this year. All right, it's Stanford at Washington Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock on the West Coast on ESPN. Big national game and time for the Huskies to step up and show us if they are ready to contend for the Pac-12 championship. And guys like myself who predicted them as a dark horse to get to the college football playoff, this is the game to win. All right, uh, Jack Fullman from Pacific Takes, uh, breaking down the Huskies and the Cardinal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anytime.